This is your guy, S.D. Booker, with the Toast to the Men. Before you listen to this video, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the like button. Hit that like button. Let's go. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the Men. Welcome to a toast to the men with your guy SD Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button before we get started. Okay, let's go. Maria Taylor and Rachel Nichols with ESPN. What is this all about? What, what is this really about? You know, you got your people, your pundits, your vloggers, bloggers, podcasters, uh, Twitter feeds, wanting to make this about gender and race and about equality. Listen, that's a smoke screen. That's a smoke screen. That's part of this agenda of uh, media, ESPN, one of the wokest, networks out there that's all about them creating this narrative to create separation between the races particularly black and whites separation between the genders and gives them more eyeballs confusion brings them money this is a not this is not about gender it's not about race this is about something people are not talking about now in the clip I just played was a clip, a recording of a conversation, a private conversation, so she thought, between Rachel Nichols and the PR manager of LeBron James. Now, 
what happened? How was this conversation recorded? Well, prior to this conversation, Rachel Nichols was on a Zoom call with ESPN. Now, this was last year when they were in the bubble. She was on a Zoom call with ESPN. That call ended, but she forgot or didn't know how to hit leave meeting. So, man, you got to hit that leave meeting. I made sure when I got off those Zoom calls, I hit that leave meeting. And she did not hit it, so it's still recording on the back end. Whole conversation is recorded. So when she gets off that call, she's talking to the PR manager for LeBron. And what's not in this conversation is that he started off the conversation kind of venting and saying that, you know, he's tired and, and kind of worn out with this whole uh, BLM and Me Too, Me Too movement. You know, it's kind of, you know, having to address this daily on different platforms and behind the scenes and, and whatever. It's worn them out, right? So he's complaining to her, which is okay. People get tired. He didn't say any der anything derogatory about BLM or the Me Too, Me Too movement. He's like, he's, he's got tired. It's worn them out. I get it. I was worn out watching it. So he's in the middle of working it. I know he's worn out. It's okay to be human and white. Now, she goes in uh, venting also, because typically that's what friends do, right? One vents, listen to their vent, and then the other vents. Private conversation, right? So she goes on to say that at that moment, she's kind of in the rift with ESPN because they want to give some of her duties, particularly the covering of the NBA Finals over to Maria Taylor. And Rachel Nichols was like, hey, I'm not having it. It's in my contract that I am to cover the NBA Finals, and I'm not relinquishing that. Not having it. She goes on to say, and I'm paraphrasing that, uh, um, Maria Taylor does a great job. She wishes her well, um, but uh, not on her watch. She's not, she's not going to eat on my plate. Now, people will look at that and say, she's discriminating uh, against a black woman. Man, this thing has nothing to do with her being black from Rachel's standpoint why she doesn't want her to eat off her plate. Now, it does have something to Rachel's, in Rachel's opinion, have something to do with race with ESPN. They're trying to pacify the public and act like they're so woke that they would put this woman, you know, in this position and give her my duties when it's obviously in my contract that this is one of my duties. So, hey, can we deny, can we just, you know, adamantly deny ESPN wouldn't do that, right, to pacify the public? To put on the face? <clears throat> I don't think so. Now, it's much bigger than the duties, right? So this is what's going on. ESPN commentators, uh, broadcasters, uh, we'll just say personalities. You can actually call them like 1099 employees or independent contractors or freelance contractors or freelancers. Because, or uh, hired guns, right? They're not your typical employees. They have a contract. And in that contract, they have duties stated. And the duties stated within that contract justifies their pay, justifies how much money is going to be in that contract, right? So Rachel sees the play, she sees what's going on. If she relinquishes, that NBA Finals job or duty to anyone, it doesn't matter who it is. When she goes back to the table, when her contract is up and she has to renegotiate, they're gonna say, well, you no longer do this. You no longer cover this. Yeah, that, that, that salary we gave you last contract, it really doesn't justify you getting that now. So they're gonna cut into her money. That's what this is about. And can you blame her? Can you blame her 
for not wanting someone to cut into her money. I can't blame her. That has to be her personal choice. If she says, hey, I want you to eat off of my plate. Now, I think Rachel would be perfectly fine with giving up some duties, even the NBA Finals duties, if ESPN said, hey, we're going to give Marie, Marie Taylor these duties, but when we go back to the table to re renegotiate, we're going to keep you at the pay, even though you have less duties, or we're going to give you more. I think she would be totally fine with that, but that's not how the game works. If she knows it and you know it, they're going to give that lady less money. And uh, who, who really can blame her? So, yeah, that has been a personal choice of mine. I can't, you can't guilt me into giving up money. Man, that's the quickest way for our conversation to end or for me, for me to walk out of your church if you try to send me a guilt trip about uh, giving money. Man, just be straight up with me and I'll say nay or yay, but don't give me no, no guilt trip. I'll walk away. So I can't blame her. But that's what this is really about. You know, the media, man, BLM, sensitive people, so-called woke people, they want to make it something that's it's really not about. The woman said nothing derogatory, said nothing disrespectful. It's competitive. It's competitive at every level. I don't care if you're at the highest level or whatever you perceive to be the lowest level there. Man, there's two janitors somewhere in America competing. Period. There's two cab drivers, two Uber drivers competing somewhere, trying to get some location, some region, some area competing. Somebody at McDonald's competing. That doesn't make them a hater. Doesn't make them a distractor. It makes them a competitor. They want to eat, you want to eat. It's competing. Nothing wrong with good competition. If you can't handle competition, hey man, you need to get out the game. But I see nothing wrong with some good, stiff competition. It builds character, creates thick skin, and it, it makes you better as a person. You know, I've had competition since early age. Early age. You know, I can remember, I can remember been on an all-star team in basketball, like eight years old. And uh, I think we we're playing at Cedar Crest or X-Line. And on this all-star team, of course, you get the best players from each team in your area, in your Dallas area, right? So Oak Cliff, South Dallas, Pleasant Grove, whatever, the best of the best, right? And they create an all-star team. And then we may play against another city or another state. Now, obviously I'm good because I'm on the All-Star team, but obviously the other teammates are good too because they're on the All-Star team, but only five people can start. Now, they didn't start me the first game, the first All-Star game that we were having, this tournament, and I was like, man, I've always started. Never rode the bench, but man, we got a team full of All-Stars. So, man, I felt the way. I felt there was nepotism because uh, one of the guys, I believe I should have had his position. He was the coach's son, right? So, man, I'm eight years old. But I still had enough thick skin to not pout about it, not cry about it. But I came up with a plan. I said, man, I ain't riding the bench. I'm starting. That was a big thing. Back, back then. Now, I got a different kind of view about, about it now, but back then, starting, man, part of the starting five was a big thing. I said, man, when I get in this game, I'm shooting every time I touch the ball. I ain't passing. I said, what I'm going to do, I <laughs> mean, I'm eight years old, but I had enough sense to know what I need to do I need to get the fans, the people in the stands on my side. Because I realized at that age, man, like, man, those fans be hyped and they'll, they'll let you know, man, those parents, those fans will let you know. Put number four in the game or put whoever in the game. We need him back in the game. Man, that'll, 
Hey man, that's the hood. That speak their mind, right? So I shot every time. Man, I was like six for eight. It's firing it up on fire, right? Defense, steals, did my thing. Never complained though. So the next week we had another game. I'm part of the starting five. Hey man, that's how you got that's how you gotta be. You can't complain. You can't cry about it. You gotta go out there and compete and take what you want. Point blank. Fast forward. Got into IT. Competed for my first job in IT. Competed. I've never been to college. I've never been to school. Any certifications I got, I got into the door of IT by going to Barnes & Noble, studying, self-studying. That's just the way I learn. I'm great and I'm disciplined of self-studying. I don't, I don't need a classroom environment. I don't do too well in the classroom environment, but I'm disciplined enough to buy the book, read it, comprehend it, regurgitate it, and I can pass any test. I can do any job in IT. Like, that's my thing. But there's been situations where I didn't get the job I wanted. Went in for an interview with this company who had a contract with the school district of Dallas. I was going to be doing different software upgrades. Now, these are complicated software upgrades, a different level. And uh, at that time, I had been in the industry about four or five years. I'm trying to move up. So, man, they brought me in for an interview. This husband and wife, they ran the company. I remember like it was yesterday. And, uh, man, this dude started, we sat down and this dude started asking me these high-level technical questions. I'm talking about high, high level. But at my level where I was, I was doing my thing, but this was on another level. And man, I remember, I remember just, I, mean, I couldn't answer any of these questions. I was mumbling. I was just like, man, I was stumbling. I was create, making up stuff that I knew didn't make any sense. It was like I was sinking. I mean, at the end of the interview, this dude, it's a white couple. This guy said, yeah, you're not. He just told me straight up. He didn't wait to call me. didn't wait to email me. He told me straight up. He said, no, you're, you're not what we're looking for. He said, uh, this is high level. You need to really uh, tighten up on some things. He said, but this is this is on another level than what, what you've been doing. And uh, we can't take a chance on sending you out there and messing up our contract with the school district. He said, but, uh, no, step it up, you know, maybe we'll, call, maybe we'll cross paths in the future. Thanks for coming out. Shook the wife's hand, shook his hand, made my way out. Man, I felt bad. I felt crushed. That dude kept it real, though. He kept it straight up, direct. And I was like, man, you know what? I had to be like 22, 23. I was like, you know what? This is gonna help me. This is gonna make me better. And I went, purchased some other high level books, studied them, and I kept growing in the ranks in IT. But man, if I would've complained and cried and whined and, and said it was racism, I never would have got better. But the point, but the truth was, I was not qualified. He was telling the truth. I wasn't qualified. If they had given me that job, I'd been your token brother. I'd been your token brother. I did not deserve that job. Point blank. And so, um, yeah, I didn't want to be rubbed on the head. I didn't want my belly rubbed. He kept it real with me, and I respect that. And that's the point we, we got to get to as a people. We got to check ourselves and just really look at, at ourselves in the mirror and say, man, do, do I deserve that? Did I work for that? Did I earn that? Um, if not, man, we're going to keep getting our heads rubbed, our tummies rubbed. 
but we're not going to be respected as a people. You know, I heard reports that Maria Taylor complained to HR that people were talking about her behind her back. Come on, man. Come on now. That that's that's silly to report that. That's silly. Man, let somebody let somebody saying, you know, you got AIDS. Spreading the rumor you got AIDS in the building. Like, man, it's not even worth addressing. And I'm not even sure the, the AIDS thing is worth addressing, man. I don't know, but uh maybe so though. But yeah, man, we gotta get tougher. We can't keep running and playing to this race car thing. Man, this this woman actually wants to make as much as Stephen A. She didn't earn it. She didn't earn it. She doesn't deserve it. And um, ESPN has a choice to make, right? They're either going to succumb to what's best for ESPN or succumb to what Twitter says, what the Twitter public says. And uh, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, man, this isn't a race thing. This is a woman being competitive, a white woman being competitive, being tough, who's more competitive and tougher than this particular black woman. Is she tougher and more competitive than all black women? No. Than most black women? No, I don't think so. But she's tougher than this particular black woman, Maria Taylor. Yeah. She is. And Maria Taylor's whining. And one one thing she did not earn. And yeah, we shouldn't be supporting that. We sh we should support that, man. So, hey, that's my two takes on that situation. As always, from me to you, love. Peace. <laughs> Get a double shot of that uh, Bossy Gate. No rocks, no chasing, baby.